All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone. We'll uh, continue to discuss regarding praying in the spirit. So there were a few more questions in the chat that we couldn't answer. So Lucy says, Sister, when we pray over a person for healing, can we check with them if they are healed to have confirmation? Is it right or wrong to have confirmation from them? Okay. Uh, so yeah, when we pray for healing, uh, Sister Lucy, like from Jesus's ministry, we see that in some situations, Jesus said, um, you know, take up your bed and walk. Or he gave them an instruction, which, uh, which was really a test. So if they were really healed, they will be able to rise up, take their bed and walk. Isn't it? So there were things like that that he asked them to do in order to check. So same thing today, if we feel uh, when we after we've prayed um, that we should tell them, let's say if they are telling I can't, um, I'm not able to lift my hand up. So after you pray, you can just say, sister, can you try? Can you lift your hand up? And you can do that in some instances, but in all cases, it may not be possible. Sister Lucy, in some cases, we may have to just wait. For example, if I pray for someone with, uh, let's say, uh, some power in their eyes and uh, I command healing for their eyes and I strongly feel that they were healed. Okay. Now, I can't tell them, remove your glasses. Because, like, um, if I do that and it actually... Uh, makes it uncomfortable for them, it's not right. So, okay, I have faith that this person got healed. Now we have to just wait and watch. Maybe when once, obviously, if your eyes are healed, you cannot wear power. It will be uncomfortable, right? You will want to remove it if your eyes are healed. So in that situation, maybe that person should be given some time so that on their own, they remove the specks or they may go to the doctor and the doctor might say, your eye, your power is fine now. You don't need the glasses. Please remove it. Got it. So the point is we can instruct them like check and see, walk and see, stretch your leg and see. We can do that because it's biblical. But in some cases, it may not be the practical thing to do. Some cases after praying, you just have to give them some time. And uh, you'll automatically find out whether or not that person was completely healed. So, Sister Lucy, I hope um, it's fine with you. All right. Now, coming to uh, Vicky's question, what does God say about the tongues, even though praise and cursing? Okay, what does the... Uh, what does the word of God say about the tongue? So when you say the tongue, you don't mean tongues, no, Vicky. You're just asking about the words that we speak. <clears throat> so you can go to James chapter 3. James chapter 3 is a passage. You will see there it talks about the power of the tongue, the power of the words that we speak. And he says that this tongue is such a powerful um, part of our body. It's like the, the, the rudder of the ship. Okay, so the rudder of the ship is a very small part, but when you, when you uh, sort of um, regulate the ship just with the rudder, it can change the direction. Or he also uses the analogy of a spark. You know, you light a match and uh, you get a, a, a flame. Now, with a little flame or a spark, uh, you can do something productive, like you can cook. Or you can do something destructive, like you can go to um, a dry forest and just put a spark. What will happen? The forest will burn. So he says the tongue is so powerful, like that rudder, like that fire. So it can be used for something that is good. It can direct our life into something that is good or it can direct our life into something that is evil. Therefore, we have to be very careful about the words that we speak, the declarations that we say. 
and uh, he also will compare you know blessing and cursing how is it as believers we speak good things and at the same time the same tongue speaks evil things gossip slander okay so that should not be the case so he talks about taming the tongue or disciplining the the speaking in a believer's life so all this is there we keep it's a totally different subject here so i won't get into it but i have given you uh, you know something to look into so james chapter 3 will be very helpful for you and of course in proverbs um, 1821 it says life and death is in the power of the tongue isn't it so uh, the tongue is very powerful so whatever we speak the words we speak we must be careful about okay coming here okay um do you have a different question vicky did did i answer you correctly or did i say something else yeah yeah it's correct it's correct no it's correct okay order. fine thank you all right so uh, any more questions regarding tongues if there are let's talk about it otherwise i'll jump to the next chapter here okay overall i hope that we are convinced that the gift of tongues is very very um uh, crucial in the life of a believer if you want to study more i have already shared in the last class there is an apc publication by the name of the wonderful benefits of speaking in tongues and it examines quite elaborately uh, how a believer can begin to operate in the gifts of the spirit and uh, especially in the area of tongues and there are also some frequently asked questions which will clarify our common doubts so that's for your homework you can go ahead and read that book you have it even in hindi if you want to you know get more clarity uh, regarding this matter so i'll i'll uh, leave it at that okay nidal has a question how do we get baptized in the holy spirit okay so uh, nidel uh, what i'll do is i will recommend a book for you as well and uh, i'll move on to the next chapter here so there is an apc publication uh, by the name holy spirit baptism so uh, you can go and read that it gives you the entire um, teaching about the baptism in the holy spirit and how a believer can receive it and what happens after that so uh, yeah please uh, do read that book okay on that note let's uh, move to chapter 8 here which is about developing our personal prayer life okay so we are talking so much about prayer um so that we can develop ourselves in prayer prayer is important for each believer so how is it that i can build up my own prayer life so we look at some uh, important pointers so when we say prayer life uh, there are at least two categories that are relevant to all of us one is personal prayer life the other is corporate prayer life okay personal prayer life is the praying that we do alone the praying that jesus said go into your closet okay shut the door behind you and then you pray so we pray by ourselves only god knows about it so that is personal prayer corporate prayer is when we are with other people and we pray so it is important to also have a corporate prayer life maybe that could be uh, praying as a church congregation or praying as a family praying in cell group praying uh, in you know some uh, meetings gatherings things like that but you can't replace personal prayer with corporate prayer i hope you understand what i'm trying to say because sometimes what happens the only time we pray is when we pray in public because we don't have a personal prayer life and that's the most dangerous um you know very very dangerous way of living life as a believer where only in ministry we pray 
from the pulpit we pray from the stage we pray but personally there's no time with the lord okay uh, now we we must definitely not uh, uh, go on, on that uh, route and uh, be very careful about developing a personal prayer life so when we say a prayer life it is going to require discipline like every other good thing that we want to develop in our lives uh, we need discipline you know when we say okay i want to learn a language it's going to take focus plan hard work uh, you're going after it systematically so what is that there's some discipline to it similarly when we talk about health we try to be systematic about it okay i must do these 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 things to develop my health so there is a system there is a strategy there is a plan there is some discipline same thing applies when we talk about prayer life if i want to by the end of the year if i want to have uh, uh, whatever you know let's say 365 days a year so at least 365 hours i want to pray then we need some discipline because if you want to um, if you just have a personal goal that okay i want to pray 365 hours that means every day i need to make time at least one hour then only i can say that at the end of 365 days i have 365 hours i'm just giving an example you can have any personal goal that you want but there will need to be some discipline if i have to uh, develop myself in that way so when we say discipline uh, it's like a, um like a controlled thing okay or a strictly we use the word regulated or regimented which simply means that you're you're monitoring it properly to ensure that time is going into this particular thing that i want to do got it for example if i'm a musician right and i want to be excellent in my musical skill what will i do i'll make sure every week uh, so many x number of hours i put into my music then only i can be excellent so we are so strict and careful about all those matters what about prayer see the things that we don't plan generally we end up spending very little time on that because we never planned right but now we are talking about spending a lot of time in prayer so if i want to spend a lot of time in prayer i have to plan it and i have to discipline myself to put in that much of time in order to grow in my prayer life so uh, um the the bottom line is we need some discipline without discipline we can't develop a strong prayer life okay uh, in the bible we are told that in all matters uh, as paul wrote to the corinthians in first corinthians chapter 9 verses 24 to 27 uh, over there you know he says that we must be temperate in all things temperate means um self res restraint or uh, we we must we must be able to um control ourselves okay self restraint means that that i'm not out of control i am controlled and i can put in uh, you know the kind of time and effort that is required that i just don't do things randomly but i'm quite um, self restrained okay so we must be temperate not uh, like you know they say like a yo yo right like you just swing to one extreme and then you swing to another extreme not like that something moderate something predictable uh, and uh, you know something that is uh, constant and consistent so that is what temperate really means now uh, in the christian life when we discipline ourselves in our prayer lives that is the one thing that will bear a lot of fruit okay uh, throughout our life so it's important for us to become self disciplined and at the same time be led by the holy spirit to have that discipline so when it comes to uh you know discipline one thing that we can remind ourselves is from the prayer life of daniel 
so he is one of those people of course jesus we already discussed about jesus but daniel the bible says that he was very particular about his prayer times uh, we all know right like he prayed three times a day and even in his challenging times he did not skip his prayer so that's something for us to uh, really uh, wonder about there is a verse here daniel chapter 6 and verse 10 uh, uh, sabita can you read it daniel chapter 6 and verse 10 now when daniel knew that the writing was signed he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward jerusalem he knelt down on his knees three times the day and prayed and gave thanks before his god as was his custom since early days okay thank you thank you sabita so we see here that uh, there was uh, something which was uh, being planned against daniel in that crisis situation what does he do he goes to the upper room and he prays he kneels he prays three times but what i want you to focus on is the last part there what does it say it says as was his custom from when since early days okay as was his custom from early days so uh, there was a practice or a discipline that daniel had see for our lives we could say oh from my school days i always wake up early i go for a run or we might say things like oh from my young days i've always been singing i've always been playing a musical instrument so it's quite easy now in those areas i've developed myself but for daniel one crucial thing that he had maintained from his younger days is the discipline of prayer so even when he was in a very difficult situation what does he do he just follows his routine like how he used to pray earlier he goes back he prays as was his custom from early days and so that teaches us that for daniel there was a set time when he prayed there was a set place where he prayed of course for daniel you know he looked in the direction of the temple and he prayed but we are all people of the new covenant we don't have to um, you know look in one direction and all that it does not required but we have to worship god we have to pray uh, in the spirit isn't it so we are people who are part of the new covenant uh, but some good things that we can take from daniel are the discipline how he uh, he planned certain parts of the day to pray and a place to pray so now uh, why do we why do we not do this why don't we uh, have a place to pray and uh, a time to pray because people have all kinds of excuses so some of the common excuses which uh, maybe you know it could be our excuses as well we say things like um, whenever the holy spirit leads me then i will pray i don't need a time i'll pray whenever holy spirit leads me now when the holy spirit is going to lead you okay and the the funny part is if you only depend on whenever the holy spirit leads me let's say we have one week time okay and we are only waiting for when the holy spirit leads you may end up praying maybe one hour two hours in a week but if you have a set time and a time table you may pray 7 hours in the week are you understanding so if we are only leaving it to whenever i feel holy spirit is leading me it actually it, it's a very um, it's not the right approach okay to prayer uh, now the other excuse for not having a plan or a place or a time people may say things like i usually pray the whole day because uh holy spirit is within me right and we can speak to god anytime so 
I pray throughout the day. I pray when I'm walking. I pray when I'm sitting. I pray. So then what's happening is we've again left it without a plan. What if a certain day is so busy that uh, you do not remember to pray? Or the whole week is so busy that you do not remember to pray? OK? So when we, we, we leave it to um, uh, chance, then we are not actually investing enough time in prayer. Time just comes and goes. How many of us know that time flies? All of us know. Before we know it, the day is over. But if we are serious about something, like I told you, we are serious about studies, we are serious about our skills, our talents, we make time for it. If we are serious about prayer, we have to make time for it. Otherwise, time will just fly away. Okay, so these are the common excuses that people have that I'll pray uh, whenever uh, through the day as I go about my day. Or some people may even say, why should I set aside time for prayer? You know, it's, it's a waste of time. Instead of that, I can work. Um, have you heard some uh, quote? It says, um, helping hands are better than praying lips. Have you heard that? Yeah, I have heard it. It's not in the Bible, by the way. Don't quote a scripture on that. But there are people who say that it's better to work than spend one hour in prayer. You sat for one hour in prayer, such a waste of time. But in the Bible, in the life of Jesus, prayer was never a waste of time. If it was a waste of time, he wouldn't pray. If it was a waste of time, a man like Daniel, think about Daniel, okay? He's not ordinary. He's working, uh, you know, sort of uh, in, a, in, in a very influential position in the kingdom. So do you think he's, he's a busy man? Obviously, he's a very busy man. Uh, he's, uh, he has his administrative function. He has, uh, you know, his executive function. So time would have been tough even for Daniel, but even a man like him. You know, today we say we are very busy. But what about Daniel? What about Jesus? They were also very busy. But it's all about making time, no matter how busy we are. If that is something intentional, we will make time for it. OK? So uh, these are all excuses. People say, uh, if I work, that's better. We can work also. If we work efficiently, we can save some time and use it for prayer. So work as much as you need to work. But even in the midst of that, we can uh, carve out some time to sit in prayer. Uh, some people may say, I don't have enough time to pray. OK, uh, that's not true. If you just um, maybe surrender your mobile phone to me today, you will change your statement tomorrow because a lot of time may be just going on the mobile, isn't it? So th these are the problems of our generation. We are wasting our time in all kinds of things. And if we ever make the statement and say, I don't have enough time to pray, that's a very false statement. Of course, we have enough time to pray. Skip lunch. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Just joking. Don't skip lunch. Eat also, but you can pray also, right? So we can carve out time if we really want to. It all depends on what I want to do. If I want to do something, I'll do it. But if I don't want to do it, then I can make all kinds of excuses for it. So uh, for us, if, I, if we want to develop our prayer time, uh, it's important to discipline ourselves as far as prayer is concerned. Um, so even in the life of Jesus, we saw earlier that he used to wake up early in the morning and pray. We saw that he used to have extended times of prayer after his ministry. He'll go away quietly, far away, so that he can spend time with the Father. Sometimes the whole night he used to pray. Okay? So it was all part of his plan that he wanted to give priority to time in prayer. And we saw the teaching of Jesus also, where he says, you, you shut yourself in the room. Okay? Pray in secret to the Father, and uh, the Father will reward you openly. So from his own life, Jesus taught us these things that show us that a personal prayer time, quietly, by myself, nobody needs to know about this, but I can have that time with the Father, and that will impact every part of who I am. So how do we do this? 
how do I discipline my prayer life? So there are some guidelines which we are going to share. Now, this is not like a commandment that you have to do this. This is the way. This is the time you have to get up. There's nothing like that. But make sure that you, um, you sort of think of your own time schedule, but carve out a substantial amount of time or a good amount of time to spend in prayer. So what are some guidelines that can help us? We can maintain a set time and a place to pray on normal days. So usually our daily rhythm is somewhat the same. You know, we generally wake up at the same time, do the same things, go to work at the same time, you know, come back at the same time. So uh, because we know our routine and rhythm, uh, we can plan a certain time of the day that is uh, suitable for us. And I mean, I uh, am a morning person and um, I think a lot of um, others may say, you know, I'm an evening person. But for me also in scripture, we find that early in the morning, Jesus rose up and he prayed. So uh, you can pick a part of the day. So for me, it will be morning, you know, maybe sometime between 5.30 to 6 a.m. So around that time you wake up, just um, allocate that time for nothing else, only for prayer. You wake up, you pray, or even earlier than that, you just wake up, you pray. So when there is a set time, what happens is you, end up spending that time for God, for nothing else. Otherwise, what, what do we do? So many things can happen. We wake up, first thing we see the phone, we waste half an hour on the phone, right? Instead of doing all, just plan it. First thing in the morning, I'm going to spend time in prayer. I'm going to spend time in reading the Bible. So do that. On normal days, that can be our routine. There are some days when our routine gets disturbed. Maybe we are traveling or, um, you know, maybe there, we are in a stressful season. Uh, you know, somebody's in the hospital, something else is going on. So those times are understandable. Those seasons are understandable. Maybe your prayer uh, timing changes a little bit here and there. Your duration changes. But once you're back to routine, get back to the schedule and pick that same time. Keep it aside for God and say, this is my time with the Lord. I am going to do this no matter what. Every day I have to spend time with God. So we can pray. We can um, read the word. We can fellowship with God. So allocate a particular time of the day to pray. Um, and we could also pick a place. Okay, How many of us, we've always thought, yeah, I'll wake up. And then you sit on your bed and you pray. The next thing you know, you're sleeping. Right. So what happened? I was praying one minute ago. I was praying and now I'm sleeping on the bed. So why do you want to pray on the bed? Get up, walk, maybe drink a cup of tea or drink some water. Find a spot where you can sit. So I have one particular spot. I just generally go sit there, maybe drink some water. And then it's easy for me because I'm a little more awake and then I can pray. But even I've tried doing this, sitting on the bed and praying, it doesn't work for me. Okay, I don't know about you guys. So think about your own self. How can you engage in prayer? Find a spot. Maybe, you know, you have a nice um, location where you can sit outside and you can really focus and pray. Find a place that works for you. Maybe, you know, your study table, you want to sit there, open up the Bible, sit there and study. But keep the same place because then what happens? Uh, even sort of, you know, mentally, it's easier because you know what you're going to do. As soon as you get up, that's what you're going to do. Go sit there, read your Bible, spend some time in prayer. So set time, set place. If you don't do that, time will just fly again, gone. So allocate some time. That will really help. Second is have a format that you may want to follow. So format, remember we discussed earlier, we said the Lord's Prayer is a good format. So over there we see uh, that we can praise God, we can thank God, that's how we begin. Then we can go on to confessing our sins, we can um, search our hearts, 
God, is anything right in my life? Is there anything I have done which has offended you? Anything I have to change about myself? So we can spend some time in reflection, in searching, in confessing um, our sins. Then we could move on to, uh, you know, praying prayers for forgiveness. Then maybe as you know, we're doing that, we can continue with some more praising, uh, thanksgiving to God. We can spend some time waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is when, uh, of course, we've prayed, right? We've prayed and all. But some moments we just sit quietly. Remember, we talked about it. That's also a kind of praying. When we are waiting upon the Lord, then God's strength is imparted to us. When we are waiting on the Lord, um, many times we can hear clearly what God is speaking. So don't just keep talking all the time. For some time, just wait and listen. What is God saying? You know, as I'm praising him, as I'm, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, worshipping him, is there anything that God is pointing out to me today? Make yourself more sensitive to the voice of God. So we can wait upon the Lord. We can um, start to pray for different things. Uh, so remember when we prayed that point, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I said we can pray for our personal life, we can pray for our spouse, we can pray for our children. So different, uh, different things which concern us, we can start to pray for all those matters. Um, so after I have, we wait on the Lord, we can spend some time praying for different prayer points. So again, I told us, if we have the prayer points written down, it's a little easier. Otherwise, every time you have to think, which are the points which I have to pray today, right? And that can distract us. So if you want, you can just write down the prayer points and start to pray through each of those points. Uh, and after that, we could pray for the church. We can pray for maybe some people. You know how uh, generally people say, Pray for me, I'm not well. Pray for me, uh, I have this problem, that problem. So maybe we have listed out some people for whom we specifically begin to pray. right? So you can spend extra time praying for people who may be in some sort of a need. And then we can pray for our personal needs. We can even um, pray in the spirit. So some part of the prayer time we can allocate to praying in tongues. OK, now for certain people, um, you may feel like when I'm praying in tongues, my mind is still active and I get distracted because obviously when we pray in tongues, we can still think. My mouth can be praying in tongues, but my mind can still think. Now what to do? I, I shouldn't get distracted. So for that, uh, if you feel that way, you can even read the Bible and pray in tongues at the same time. That's possible because we are engaging the mind. The mind is focusing, focusing on the word of God, whereas the mouth is praying in tongues. You got it? So you can spend some time praying in tongues um, even while you read the Bible. Okay, so that is also something that we can do. Then we can spend some time in declaration. What is declaration? Declaration is when we speak the word, you know, uh, like um, uh, my home, you know, God has promised in his word that uh, his people will dwell in uh, peaceful habitations, in secure dwelling places. My home is a, a peaceful habitation. My home is a secure dwelling place. You know, the Lord is, is the fire around my home. The angel of the Lord encamps around my home. What am I doing? I'm just taking scripture and speaking it over my home. You got it? So in that way, maybe some portion of our prayer time can just be declaration. You know, I am, I walk in divine health. I am healed. Every part of my body is strong. I speak strength to my bones. I speak strength to my eyes. What are you doing? You're just declaring. That can also be a part of our prayer every day. So prayer is not just petitioning. There are all kinds of prayers. Thanksgiving, asking God for various things, praying in the spirit waiting on the Lord, a combination of these things, you know, you can uh, pray every day. And maybe some portion of the prayer time can be spiritual warfare. We'll come to it. 
spiritual warfare what is spiritual warfare where we go against the devil we go against demons okay so it's like a fight you get really angry with the devil okay so it's okay to get angry with the devil so uh, you may want to just spend some whatever 10 minutes being so angry with the devil and go against all that he's doing and you say i'm canceling this i'm destroying that i'm commanding this to leave i bind this in the name of jesus just go after the devil right do your spiritual warfare pull down those strongholds maybe that is what you need to do uh, for your personal life or somebody that you're praying for so spend some time in spiritual warfare so in this way what happens if we have allocated time space some set format then we end up praying more we end up covering more you got it so uh, that is something that we can uh, try to do now i understand it's not so easy because i personally have struggled in this area but over a period of time there is some amount of predictability and discipline that has come into my own personal prayer time so i would encourage you to start right i would encourage you to start uh, somewhere and uh, uh, try to regulate your prayer life in this way and that will really um, you know help help you uh, then of course we can also pray at any time so the the prayer that i talked about earlier was a scheduled prayer okay so you have a set time for this prayer and you pray um, but there are times when we've got to pray without any schedule Meaning, let's say, uh, in some time, I just feel led by the Holy Spirit to pray more. I may just take time out and say, okay, I'm going to sit and I'm going to pray now. So there can be times which are spontaneous. Meaning, it's not part of the plan, but you just want to pray, so you go and pray. We need both. Scheduled, unscheduled. Both kinds of times. And extra apart from daily prayer there are certain days that we can take to pray so i remember when i was working okay so um uh, it's only maybe about few years ago that i joined full time with uh, apc but before that i was working and i was serving as a volunteer um, volunteer minister at that time it was really difficult to find time to pray like extended uh, hours of time because monday to saturday you're working working very hard you have to be responsible accountable at your workplace so by the end of the day you're tired okay morning something you pray and you go but you don't feel satisfied because it, it feels very rushed so in those times what i used to do is maybe the weekends right weekends when you come back home you finish some of your uh, chores for the next week evening times i used to just keep aside extra time to just pray to listen to worship music, to make declarations, pray in tongues, extra time. So uh, maybe holidays, you get some holidays. You know, we all plan for vacation, go with family. But we can plan prayer days where we can say, OK, I have this free day, full day I'm just going to pray, nothing else. So we can have those special days. Or maybe some three days you set aside for yourself when there's no work. Or when I have vacation, I do that. If I, if I have leaves, just take three days, you know, or uh, maybe even a week, fast and pray. Because at that time, we can do it. We don't have so many, uh, you know, responsibilities. You don't have to keep schedule the way we are keeping now. So extra time to set aside for prayer days and uh, prayer sessions. There can be a, a particular season where you, you sort of immerse yourself in just seeking the lord so this is all very helpful and um, it enables you to spend a lot of time with god so i'm coming to the chat here where uh, blessy is asking everyone will say that when you wake up early in the morning and pray around three four or five o'clock god listens why the line is clear is it blessy okay god listens then to our prayers and you will get a quick response from god my question is there any particular time for prayer to get a quick reply from god so i think god always responds immediately uh, 
वैसे ही हियर्स सी बिकॉज ही इज आउटसाइड ऑफ टाइम ऑल दिस क्विक लेट दैट्स ऑल इन आर इन आर जोन फॉर हिम अ प्रेयर ऑफ फेथ or the right kind of prayer remember we talked about the right foundations as long as a prayer has a right foundation he hears it as long as the prayer is in his will he hears it so my point is time doesn't matter i know what you mean lot of people say that right if you want to uh, get answer you should get up early in the morning and pray uh, i mean i understand maybe it's a good thought that somebody came up with but there's no particular scripture to back it up okay there's nothing that says that spiritual atmosphere is clear early in the morning some people even say demons are very active this time to this time how do we know they are active all the time only <laughs> right so there's no biblical basis for all this we just have to be alert all the time that's all so i i hope it answers your question okay fine uh okay uh, is there any other question no uh okay parmita is asking is it necessary to pray for others first hmm necessary to pray for others first uh i i don't uh, i mean unless god is bringing it to your heart uh, parmita that there is a let's say you start to pray and the holy spirit reminds you um maybe there's a person you've not forgiven or there's an issue that is not resolved so in that situation maybe you have to pray for that person first and then you, you can continue with the rest of the prayer but otherwise it's okay to pray for yourself first also uh, there's no issue okay yeah A any other any other questions practical questions how long to pray nobody has asked that question how long to pray how long let me quiz you so how long is the right duration there's no okay sure yeah there's no recommended right and uh, right duration to pray um okay uh, blessy says uh, as the spirit leads and uh, gertrude says one hour um so sister gertrude that one hour we get when jesus was telling his disciples right that you couldn't even wait one hour he says that so then from there we get the picture that okay maybe his expectation was that at least one hour the disciples will pray okay but yeah you're right we can't really um, put a time to it but we can still allocate uh, you know some time uh, for me it, it's something like 45 minutes to 1 hour something like that uh, uh, but you see even if you end up let's say on certain days you pray little less or you are able to pray more it's still sort of fine but i'll tell you when we make it very short right for example if i say uh, okay because there's no recommended time just pray 10 minutes or 5 minutes some people 2 minutes right yeah i prayed i woke up early in the morning i prayed how long did you pray 2 minutes because there's no recommended time but you see there's a problem with that there are certain things that god can speak and do when we sit in his presence which cannot happen if we are so quick you got it so if we rush like 2 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes that's it get up and go then we miss out on what god can do in that moment of in those moments of prayer so extended period of time let's say at least 1 hour it is required because we need that kind of time to just calm ourselves and to uh, pray all the points and then also listen from god pray in the spirit make our declare it takes so much time you got it 
so it's nice it's not there anywhere it doesn't say you pray for one hour but it's my personal view that let's say a minimum of about you know 45 minutes to one hour is helpful uh, to kind of be in god's presence but there are times when we have to sit longer as blessy said as the spirit leads so sometimes we don't feel that satisfaction maybe on that day you have extra time so you sit 2 hours 3 hours you may even sit 5 hours but it it may be necessary on those days so we should be willing to stretch more than the minimum of uh, let's say 1 hour okay so uh, i hope that is helpful okay okay um uh, minati is asking is it necessary to confess our sin before prayer every time uh yes i i would say yes because it is part of the pattern that jesus taught us right over there he taught us forgive us our sins as we forgive um, like forgiveness and sort of clearing everything uh, with god uh, so yeah it's important before we go into deeper prayer we need to confess our sins and clear matters with god is that okay okay vicky um people has such desire and it will take a while to express that so why we need more time to pray such desire and it will take a while to express that okay uh, so vicky i am trying to understand your question correctly you're saying that we know what we want and we can we can express that quickly in prayer so why do we need long time to pray right is is that what you're asking okay that's correct yeah i i get it but you see again it's prayer is not shopping list right where you you know what you want and you it just takes 2 minutes to tell god what you want it's already on my list i just check it off uh, yeah i told god everything because when we treat prayer like that then yes why should i spend one hour five hours in prayer but prayer is relationship wiki that's what we are trying to say we need to be in god's presence we need to um communicate with god speak to him allow him to speak to us allow him to do something inside us so that that's the whole process so it's not just about telling god i need this i need that that's why you need a good amount of time i hope that answers your question uh, and lucy at times spirit is willing to pray and our body doesn't support us okay uh, how do we fight the situation and kneel down to pray okay so it's not at times sister it's all the time right whenever we want to pray uh, there'll be something or the other that we feel like oh i didn't finish that work or this is urgent or um, your body feels tired i'll pray later all the time because it's a matter of discipline that's why i said discipline you know what discipline is discipline is whether you like it or you don't like it you got to do it okay so don't go by that every day the body will say i'm tired can we pray later you say no this is the time for prayer you have to pray <laughs> okay so you got to push yourself uh, you got to discipline yourself so don't listen to your body just listen to your spirit and go with it okay uh, i suppose last uh, question parmita says uh, does posture matter for praying can i pray in any position <laughs> okay um yeah see prayer is a matter of the heart and the spirit so posture doesn't matter also uh, however in scripture we do see certain postures like you know people kneeling down raising hands falling flat on the floor so maybe at times you sense that you need to take a certain posture in those times it's better to be in that posture and pray so it will matter when you're being led by the spirit uh, or or you just want to express yourself in that way to take a certain posture okay it it everything doesn't depend on the posture but sometimes posture can be helpful to pray effectively so that's that's the thing 
Okay, great. So we've run out of time. Let's stop here. Um, and there are a few more key points about um, a disciplined prayer life, which we will take up in the next class. Uh, let's uh, pray and close. I will request somebody from our on-campus batch to pray. Who would like to pray to close? OK, the mic is here. Asafu, you can take it and pray, please. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for teaching us about how to pray in tongue, how to receive your spirit. My Lord, otherwise, my God, I'm again one more subject. How to develop our prayers in our life? You teach how the prayer life of Daniel, of God, and of some more guidelines. What we have built us in this those days. We have to be confident on you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Man, thank you. And uh, thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, have a good day. Uh, we shall connect in the next class. Thank you so much. Bye for now.